Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell EMC World 2017. Brought to you by Dell EMC. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live at Dell EMC World 2017. This is our eighth year of coverage of, formerly known as EMC World, but it's now Dell World, first year of the combined company. Some say Dell bought EMC, some say EMC bought Dell. Either way, the merger and the acquisition or a combination, however you want to call it, certainly working out. This CUBE coverage of the first year. I'm John Furrier with my co-host, Keith Townsend, CTO advisor. Our next guest is Tarun Thacker, co-founder and CEO of Dados IO. Big news, and as well, Peter Schmales, Vice President of Marketing, Business development, a former EMCer, been in the industry. Guys, congratulations, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, John. Thank, Thank you, Keith. very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, Pleasure to be here. Big bang news at the Daily Insta, tons of stories here. Obviously the big story is the combination, but you guys have some really amazing news. Funding, traction, give us the update on the hard news. Excellent, thank you John. First, thank you guys, thank you very much for the, uh, for the opportunity to be here. Um, you, know, I, you know, last couple of weeks have been just amazing for us. You know, last week was all about product, which uh, Peter's going to talk about, you know, our journey from our 1.0 to 2.0. That journey is, you know, all driven by customers and where the market is headed. But this week was all about enterprise adoption. It's about enter enterprise recognition. You have these two industry stalwarts, $200 billion of market cap recognizing the value of what we have been And so the hard news is what, Cisco and, uh, and, and NetApp have invested. Cisco and NetApp, both are investors in day two today. So this is a, uh, a round of funding from corporate investors, any VCs coming in as well? Or? Both, you know, the, the, the investors were already in the company. They want to they, maintain their ownership. Okay, so they, they did their pro rata, they re-upped. Correct. Okay, correct. so new corporate investors, that's validation. Yes, yes. Why, yes. why are they investing? I mean, that's what I want to know. Why the hell are they investing? Why don't they just do it themselves? Yeah, so, you know, look, uh, I think this, it's very, very clear that this industry of the data management or this industry of enterprise adoption to the cloud is this massive pace right now, right? Uh, the acceleration is, is at its highest gear. Uh, so to speak, and, and you know, we've been working with both those companies for the last few months, and, and they recognize at fundamental level what we have built, right? The application-centric nature of the product, built it fundamentally for cloud-native applications, uh, helping existing customers mobilize their applications to the cloud. You know, you have th we have now three-year lead yeah. into this space. Yeah. Right? And it's best to join forces. Well, we had our CUBE conversation in our studio in Palo Alto. You were kind of smiling then, certainly smiling now, the big funding, <laughs> big fat financing, as they say. <laughs> but you were really kind of coy about not sharing the news to me, which I thought was cool, but kept the secret. But you guys have also shown, the right reasons. but the cloud, cloud certainly is accelerating. You guys have the, uh, the tiger by the tail. But if you look at the VC funding landscape, we were saying yesterday on our opening that it's a canary in the coal mine. It's a really leading indicator of what's going on in the marketplace. If you're a storage, startup, you're dealing with, hey, no one's funding that. They're repivoting always. Right. You see, I got scale out, scale up storage. Pivot, pivot, pivot. Right. But all these companies, data management, you know, data backup and protection are all booming, massive uh, rubric, cohesity, billion dollar valuations. Why are these companies getting such big funding? Why are you guys being successful? Is cloud just creating massive scale for what was normally a white space? No, so you know the, the answer. I'll go first. And go for it. I'll jump in because you come from this world of uh, <laughs> uh, most recently. <laughs> uh, look, uh, John, uh, there has been no innovation in this space of backup and recovery for the last 20 years. Right? We've been still living in the world of four-wall data center, media server-based architectures, and backup and recovery products that were truly written for tape architectures. That world ain't exist in this cloud world. Right? There has been no innovation. And now you're seeing companies, Rubrik Coincity, great companies, great fellow companies to be part of. Um, and all of us recognize the disruption opportunity and recognize what we can go all do for the next 10, 20 years. And I'll jump on that. So if you net it out, there's really two things happening. You know, 70% of CIOs have a cloud first strategy, right? So enterprise, one of the reasons we're here, you know, enterprises have a cloud first strategy. Okay, they're moving to the cloud. They're doing two things. One, they're either building net new applications in the cloud, geo-distributed, you know, highly scalable applications. You need a fundamentally different approach for protecting those applications, that's number one. Number two is, those same customers are saying, I want to move as many of my non-recovery workloads from my traditional four-wall data center off-prem. I want to leverage the cloud. I want to put my data where I want to put it, when I want to put it there. There's no, there has not been any good solution to do that. So for us, that's cloud data management. We're about protect. If you have stuff in the cloud, we'll protect it. 
If you want to move stuff to the cloud, from the cloud, within the cloud, that's mobility to us, that's what we do. And ultimately, this is why there's so much attention being paid to cloud data management, because everybody's moving to the cloud, and there's the one thing we have heard consistently. It never existed before, really. They're not taking traditional tools to the cloud. Simply so, put. You know, go to the website. I don't see anything about backup. I don't see anything about, you know, there's data protection. But in the enterprise, when we go to the cloud for the first time, a couple of things we figure out first. Backup is hard <laughs> because, you know, I can't point my data domain to S3 and back up S3 or some type of object storage. I also find out that these traditional architectures within the data center just don't translate to the cloud. So where are you guys at in the education cycle of the enterprise and helping them understand the value of an application-centric model and where do you need to go? Yeah, so, um, uh, uh, Keith, that's a great question, right? You, um, you actually hit the nail on the head. You have these proprietary backup appliances, we used to call data domain really a PBBA appliance. You had these uh, media server-based architectures with the likes of Veritas and Commvault, perfect for four walls, right? In the cloud, geo-distributed applications, right? And you look at those, sort of that scale, the application centricity, and we started what we did in our strategy, we started with absolutely greenfield. What does that mean? That means the cloud native applications, the non-relational databases, right? The analytics, the IoT applications. So you go towards the use case where the world and the customers are already thinking cloud native. Right. Right? You don't Coaching and training customers, as you rightly call this very hard journey. It is the crossing the chasm, it takes time, right? You need to start with early adopters, the innovators, who will then latch onto you and take you forward, right? So our strategy of picking a space which was completely greenfield and blue ocean, couldn't have served us better. So what's that next step after we've figured out backup, because we have to back the data Correct. up. Correct. Data management was way more than backup. Now, as I've blown away the limits of my data center and I can access data from anywhere in the world, what have you helped customers understand that they can do with their applications and data now that I can access it from Excellent anywhere question. in the world? Yeah, so I can take that. So to your point, if you look at protect, our three pillars, protect, mobilize, monetize. You'll hear us say that over and over and over again. We started with protection, it's a business critical use case, you cannot have a cloud first strategy if you don't protect your data. Got it. Second piece around the mobility piece is, like you said, giving what have we done by being application centric data management. What we do that nobody else does is we enable you to very intelligently and very efficiently move data sets in native format wherever you want to any cloud that you want. We don't normalize data, we don't change formats. So for example, to give you one great example of application centricity, I have an on-prem workload. I want to run a query against that, star.peter star. That resulting data set, that's all I want to move to the cloud, because I want to run BI against it. I want to do something that helps me monetize my data in the cloud. That data set I want to move. One, you can run a query against that database. Two, we'll intelligently and efficiently only move that data in native format, spin it up in the cloud as native data set, all your metadata is there, do whatever you want to that data. When you're done, move it back if you want. Do whatever you want. So essentially, we've eliminated any silos from a cloud standpoint. So what we've done is we've given people complete cloud freedom to move what they want, when they want to, where they need to. That's so the essence of what we've done. Let's talk about the monetized portion of this, because you guys have been curious. If I can move the data to the cloud natively, that's, that's great, that's really value add, but on top of that, I need to figure out really tough problem, which is metadata. I have global data worldwide. I have data scientists wanting to pound against that in a completely new way. Do you guys provide a, way, a new way to access this data other than my legacy tools? Absolutely, Keith. So I want to hit on those two, two, two points in, in the statement you made. Moving effic data efficiently to the cloud, Keith, is a very hard problem. What we have done by being only protecting what you need to protect, why back up an entire database when you only care about a couple tables? Remember, we are going from traditional monolithic architectures to microservices in the cloud, right? DBAs and admins, they only care about a couple tables. I want to run a BI query against a certain part of the data. What we have fundamentally done to the first part of your question, move data very highly efficient, which is 10x d of what data domain could do. We have significant amount of IP protected around that technology. The second piece around the metadata question, what we've really done, Keith, in our sort of scale out elastic data protection to the tune of elastic compute and elastic storage, you need to extend that to elastic data management, is your metadata catalog, cat backup at the end of the day has a catalog. 
the, the golden nugget. Right. That catalog used to be siloed. If I had 10 media servers, I had that catalog siloed around that. No Our value in there. No value Correct. Back. Our catalog is now distributed stretched across cloud boundaries. If I have a Datos running on-prem and I have a Datos running in Amazon, those are two instances of the same software, two nodes, the metadata catalog can see each other. You back up here, John can see that backup in the cloud. He can spin up a SQL Server in the cloud. You couldn't do that past. You couldn't do that back in the old world. The golden nugget, you need to stretch your metadata catalog and you need to make it distributed across cloud boundaries, which is fundamentally what What's the doing. impact to the application developers? Because now, are you freeing up, what's, I mean, what is the ultimate value to the customers? I mean, you're basically freeing up the hassles uh, for the app developer to say whatever. I mean, give us, the, give us the bottom line. So, you know, absolutely, John. Uh, look, I'll give you a customer real scenario, okay? A world's leading e-commerce platform where we go and our wives go sp spend a lot of money <laughs> buying clothes. I'm going to just leave it at that, right? They are moving from a monolithic architecture, the Oracle DB2, to the cloud-native architecture, right? Application developers want to take their CI CD. I'm writing new code, I want to bring new catalog items on the, on the website. I want to test my code changes. An hour ago the, from the data, not two days ago, which was the old backup world. Every day you're doing a backup. Now they want what we call, to your question of we don't call it backup, we call it versioning. I want to version one hour ago because I want to test my code changes. I want to deploy those code changes on the e-commerce platform driving a billion dollars in revenue. So you're so enabling more, more coolness for the developer. Well, you're uh, giving, From a data stale versus fresh data. Yeah, you're, uh, to a certain level, I mean not. But I, I'll only jump on that as well yeah. because it's, it's the thing that, that sometimes goes overlooked is that one of the things that the cloud has done that people sort of don't always acknowledge is that it's created, we pushed the silo problem from on-prem to the cloud. Clouds don't talk to each other. You know, the notion of that, so the notion of the universal file system or such in the cloud, which some of the you know, competitive landscape tries to do. Wait a minute, we're supposed to have multi-cloud. Yeah, we're supposed yeah. no, to, no, to your point, we, we do have multi-cloud. <laughs> but it's amazing how difficult it is to deal with that. So to your point. In the future, someday they might be talking to each other, but today they're not. The, but, but, and my point on that is that we enable you to do that. So the ultimate value to the customer, I'm the marketing guy, yes, but the notion of cloud freedom is a direct business value to the customer. So that's People legit like, from your standpoint. Cloud put freedom. It, put it where you need to put it when you want to put it there. Bring it back when you want to bring it back. So it's, from an app standpoint, a lot more flexibility, a lot more agility in terms of app development. From a cost standpoint, from an IT standpoint, I can dramatically reduce my cost because I can leverage the cloud versus having everything on-prem. And from an operation standpoint, I ensure everything's protected. And we so know cloud native cloud. developers are very like, they won't tolerate a lot of the old baggage and dogma of um, right. IT. Right. No, I'll, I'll, Are you freaking kidding me? That's yeah. actually, can I'll, I take I'll, that one? Can yeah, I take please, that please, one? please. That's actually, a, the, if you depending see on how many hours we have to talk <laughs> to you, because that's a fascinating topic. Just pause, can I pause you for a second? Yes. That's only 30 days since he left EMC. <laughs> <All right. laughs> anyway, the point is that, no, but the, you know, the, the problem is new. You know, but there's a, there's a persona, what I refer to as basically like a persona innovator's dilemma that we're also helping address. Because it's a, there's a convergence of personalities and people involved in the protection and management of data. So to your point, we've been dealing with a lot of the new personas going after cloud native data protection. But you're watching the organization, the enterprises, they're going through it and they are rapidly transforming these personas. So part of our job, to your education point earlier, is making sure that the left hand knows what the right hand's doing and marrying those two different pieces because that's ultimately, and that's value to the customer. And we help drive that process. Well, Tarun and Peter, congratulations and, and good to see the journey and continue to accelerate. Thank you. Entrepreneurial Thank you. journey and we'll keep in touch. Love the name, Data OS. Um, we believe and, and Wikibon believes and, and they're firm on this, the business value of data is ultimately going to be a major, major disruptor for business, not necessarily a technology, but having that data operating system, that data DOS, as you call it, is going to be fundamental. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you Josh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. This Cube live here at Dell EMC World 2017. More live coverage. Stay with us. More after this short break.